Another great novelist, Michael Crichton, came up with the truly brilliant concept of extracting the blood of ancient mosquitoes, isolated in fossilized amber, as a means to collect DNA to reproduce the long dead dinosaurs. This might be the single most genius piece of pseudoscience in any fiction novel, and apparently, it wasn't that far off the mark. But ultimately, it was Spielberg who brought it to life in his sci-fi horror masterpiece, Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park was made in 1993, at the exact time he was working on another of his classics, Schindler's List, which is something I'm not sure any other filmmaker has accomplished before or since. Sure, there are directors who've made two films in a year, but not two of the greatest films of all time, and certainly not two movies with such differing tone and subject matter. See, Jurassic Park is about dinosaurs coming back to life, and Schindler's List is not. It's Hebrew from the Talmud. It says whoever saves one life saves the world entire. Spielberg was so troubled on the set of Schindler's List dealing with such depressing subject matter that he'd call his friend Robin Williams on a daily basis to cheer him up. And now, any time I think of Robin Williams, I think of the Holocaust, which is what I think he would have wanted. Jurassic Park paved the way for CGI, or computer-generated imagery. Before 1993, no other film had come close to making the new technology even remotely believable. We were still better off with the old Harryhausen method of stop motion until Spielberg brought together a team that would combine groundbreaking CGI effects with in-camera animatronics, including Phil Tippett, Stan Winston, and Dennis Murin. And the result in my mind is better than anything we have today, some 30 years later. However, what's really lacking today is the grounded realism of the era. The story, the writing, the seriousness with which the subject matter was treated by the all-star team of actors. That's what sold Jurassic Park. The effects just stuck the landing. There's a lot of reasons why the Jurassic World movies don't really work for me, but the biggest problem is tone. Generally, that's going to be inevitable when you try to reboot something decades later. More often than not, the sensibilities of the era have changed enough that it's an uphill battle just to try and recapture the energy of the time when the film was originally made. Of course, there are exceptions. Mad Max, Top Gun, and Blade Runner were all rebooted in spectacular fashion without missing a beat. But when I watch Jurassic World, I get the impression that even the filmmakers are painfully aware that their creation doesn't live up to the original. Yeah, what could have given me that idea? That first park was legit. You know, I have a lot of respect for it. They didn't need these genetic hybrids. They just needed dinosaurs, real dinosaurs. Okay, That's kind of enough. Please don't wear it again. But I will say, for better or worse, as a quick sidebar, in 2012, I got to attend a screening of a small indie film called Safety Not Guaranteed, starring Aubrey Plaza and Jake Johnson, which was directed by a fairly unknown filmmaker named Colin Trevorrow. Cut to three years later, and he's directing on one of the biggest franchises of all time. So that just goes to show that anything is possible in this business if you keep at it. And the Oscar goes to... Kiyoi <laughs>